<laughs> W-E-F-U-N-K. We funk. Now, like I was saying, we're talking about the Spike Lee just releasing the poster for his movie today, and I was joking around how it didn't really give much away. It got us thinking that, I mean, you think of movie posters, and I'm going to even go as far as to say, like, certain album covers. There's just some certain great ones that, like, when you think album cover or movie poster, it, like, pops up in your head. For sure. Like, some of just the greatest that just really sell the movie or the album. I mean, I guess I'll go first. So I guess what we'll be taking a closer look at is uh, movie posters and... Uh, Best movie posters and album covers throughout the years. Movie posters and album artwork. Uh, uh, I, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I'll kick it off first and just say uh, I think there's going to be no surprise where I'm going to go with here because you guys know, know me. But uh, we're going to definitely start off with Star Wars posters. I mean, All right now, which one dating, are we talking? A uh, New Hope? Or well, are we talking? Dating, dating uh, back from the very original one, where it's like him holding Luke Skywalker, holding the lightsaber up, and Leia like wrapped around his leg. Yeah, it's just like this epic. I think Vader's head is in the background in the sky. It's just this epic, like so much going on. In this movie poster, and for sure. Like, what the hell is this crazy movie? But then. Throughout the years, every Star Wars movie that's come out since then, a big thing has been like the official poster release of the movie. I was just like, because they're all known for just being like these crazy, elaborate, over the top, like showing so much action and just much like shots. everything in Star Wars, but <laughs> <laughs> definitely but, yeah, adding to the whole fan experience, though. The yeah, for sure. Speaking of the Star Wars one too, another really like, epic thing. If you want to go down that rabbit hole is look at that movie poster from, like, other countries and, like, the Star Wars one from, like, other countries. Some of them are, like, crazy. Like, the Russian one is really interesting. I know the Chinese one is uh, pretty, like, just <laughs> okay, yeah, bonkers. Yeah. No, that is definitely a fun thing to do with movie posters, though. Uh, look at the other countries. All other countries have different, you know, uh, uh, movie posters, which are usually somewhat similar. They'll maybe take, like, one of the elements of it and then kind of play around with it, but sometimes just totally different, you know, color schemes and everything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, I guess if uh, for my first movie poster, I'm actually going to, I guess, throw you a bone as, a, as of course, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to kick it to the 90s, but uh, and, of course, one of uh, both of our favorite directors, but uh, I, fe- I feel definitely one of the more all-time iconic movie posters and definitely one of the more, like, purchased movie posters that I've ever seen anyway, but, uh, uh, of course, the Pulp Fiction uh, movie poster. Oh, for sure. Uber Thurman, man. smoking a cigar, feet up in the air, smoking a cig on the, uh, on the bed. Yeah, right? How surprising is it that she's wearing shoes in that poster, too, and she's not barefoot, knowing what we know about Tarantino now. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Love of the feet. She's wearing high heels in the picture, but, you know, you'd expect a barefoot. But she's got the gun in front of her. She's smoking a cigarette. She's reading a pulp comic. Yeah, reading the pulp comics. It yeah, that's like definitely old, like, uh, one of the... That's definitely one of the ones that you'll see most, uh, you know, like in uh, people's, you know, uh, dorms and uh, man caves and whatnot, you know. For sure. For sure. <clears throat> um, I guess another one that I would say, and just kind of sticking with just my Star Wars thing is, but I would say like Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark kind of has that same Star Wars feel. Where it's like Harrison Ford in the middle, like with the giant whip and the classic hat, and then like all the characters from the film like spread out around the background, like this epic kind of like comic book yeah. and drawing, if you will. Yeah, no, for sure, definitely has the same uh, Star Wars kind of feel as well. It's got like a pretty uh, identifiable like a uh, 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 type uh, uh, lettering to it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like the uh, the classic Indiana Jones font. Is pretty like recognizable and you know synonymous. Yeah, the with big the... like orange and yellow letters. Yeah, sure. yeah. And uh, I mean, I guess kind of that's where one of the things where I go with these movie posters are kind of like that font. You can kind of like you can you know see that re- kind of recreated and know that you're doing like an indie spoof. All right. There are other kind of movie posters that are just like kind of iconic just for like almost being parodied. Uh, uh, you'd see this a lot with Scarface where there's not like a rapper that hasn't like at least done a, a photo shoot with the <laughs> half black, half white side. You know what I mean? But that whole just iconic poster has been like parodied a lot, you know? For sure. Absolutely. That's uh, such a good point. 
I guess kind of jump around too. I'll go uh, stick with your '90s thing, but I'll jump over. I'm going to come back to the movies, but I'm going to jump over to album covers for a little bit. And just when we we're talking about this, I don't know about you, but the first thing that popped in my head, uh, just because, just I don't know, to me, such an iconic uh, album cover. Should we say it on the count of three? Uh, one, two, three, Nirvana. Never, never mind. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, of course. I mean, I was I was gonna go with the Weird Al version for the gag because equally iconic is the Weird Al wearing boxers. But of course, you want to give the peeps the never mind uh, your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, it's just a crazy, it's just a crazy album cover. You know what I mean? Just the naked baby swimming underneath the pool. Yeah, little dicky flopping in the pool. I mean, but like, yeah, but you think? I mean, I think album cover. Like, right where my head goes to. Like, For sure. And I guess that one does kind of pair off with the fact that it has one of the, it is as well, one of like the most iconic albums itself. You know what I mean? Like especially just mm-hmm. definitive of the 90s, like that actual like uh, uh, music uh, side of the album was like such a revolutionary like culture shock and the album cover definitely went totally along with it with just like the uh, you know shock value but still just like imp- uh, for forever uh, 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 you know cemented in your head synonymous with Nirvana is that one image of the baby floating absolutely even the absolutely. in utero logo was somewhat you know iconic but the uh, the baby and the, and the Weird Al version a close second to the Weird Al version <laughs> I'm going to throw you another iconic 90s one from a couple years after, never mind, but uh, from another, from an album that was, you know, pretty uh, uh, iconic for the 90s as well, but the Dookie album cover was always, you oh, know, it was wild, like, man. I had that on my list too. Okay, yeah, like the bomb dropping over the cartoon town, but that was a very, uh, you know, just recognizable with the band and with the 90s, you know. There's a lot going on in that picture, too, man. It's like a Where's Waldo page. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, for there's sure. There's, like, all the cats. There's, like, dogs throwing poop. Well, it's Dookie, so there's a lot of poop. Getting a lot of poop around. references going down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's uh, one of the first albums I ever got taken away from me was Dookie, just because it was one of the first, like, parental advisory ones. Because okay, of, interesting. Uh, we get the song, but da na 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 Masturbation's lost its mind. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking great. So my mom heard that. I was like, oh, we're getting rid of this one. Another album cover. That I mean, just I really uh, to go along with that even real quick, but just the fact that the name of the album was bit was shit you know what i mean that people didn't like that was kind of the the uh, the first time people had heard that term or whatever but then once you put two and two together it was already too late you know like my mom already bought the album by the time she like uh (laughs) 2020 ran the story about what the what the the kids were doing you know Uh, another album that got taken away from me i'm gonna mention this one too just because based solely on the album cover. <laughs> like, my mom didn't even hear the album. She just saw the cover. I think I might even talk about this on mic before, too, but she saw the cover and was like, I don't know what's going on in that album, but you're not listening to it. Would be the uh, second DMX album, Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood. <laughs> okay, where interesting, it's yes. Just a plain white background. It's him standing in the middle shirtless with his arms out. And then just like buckets of blood being poured over. Yeah, it's like a crucifixion, just, uh, 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 white yeah. black, white backdrop with like a crucifixion thing going. DMX being just crucified, covered in blood. <laughs> and uh, so, based on appearance alone, that's another album cover I think of all the time. And then my mom took that one around the way. She wasn't wrong. Yeah, like, yeah. Have been listening to what was on that album. I kind of have a similar story, but I uh, uh, another iconic album, but Doggy Style from the 90s. But I ended up having to buy like a, a copy of that off of my friend or something, or I traded my friend's CD. But I ended up getting a copy of my friend's Doggy Style, but he had to, in order to pass by his mom, he needed to like take a, mag- a, a black marker and like edit himself and like draw things on and like scribble things out out but like he like artistic influenced the doggy style album cover himself to like make it pass mustard by his mom and then what i did i actually flipped it inside out and if you remember there was like a sick picture of like it was like a mugshot style picture of snoop yeah that yeah. i rocked as the because the original was like him sniffing a dog's ass it was a uh, it was there's weed leaves on there it was uh your mom yeah, uh, your, your, your mom wouldn't like it for an 11 year old boy or whatever we were 
<laughs> yeah, but that is a classic album too, man. Just that album cover and like the cartoon dog. Yeah, you're right, sticking his head in like the doghouse. I think smelling some dog's head. <laughs> I mean, a lot of classic rap ones, I guess. Another, uh, uh, but just the uh, baby with an afro is just, like, immediately identifiable for Ready to Die mm -hmm. and for with Biggie. Um, you know, uh, 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 a lot of the uh, 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 Tribe Called Quest had some, like, you know, the Tribe Called Quest, you know, caricature is, like, an iconic logo identified to the band. For sure. I guess the Beast Blue Boys are another one of those. Really yes, Wu-Tang has, like, the all-time classic logo. I, I mm -hmm. guess uh, maybe to hop it back into the movies, but kind of uh, for the Wu Tang logo, I always kind of looked at that as like the Godfather logo. You know what I mean? The marionette puppet thing that is like little marionette puppet thing. Yes, and the Godfather is another one. I guess there's even like a couple of different Godfather posters, or you know, that's just like a, a, an iconic recreation that's not necessarily the poster. You know, the marionette strings is on the poster. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like outgrowing the poster itself, just the logo and the iconic, you know, just all you need For is sure. that marionette, marionette thing. The poster is the marionette holding the Godfather logo, but then the actual picture on the poster is just him holding a cat. <laughs> Brando just holding a cat? Yeah. I just, mean, I think uh, that's one that there's been a couple because there's another, I think, interpretation where, like, the, uh, I, probably when they re released it or whatnot, but there's, like, a white and gold one. The most recent time I watched it, it was like, there was, uh, that was the cover. But I think that's had a couple of different, you know, uh, recreations over the years. For sure. And if you're talking just straight logo, because that's another classic one, too. And I'm thinking of three just off the top of my head who was like, it's just the logo of the movie. Uh, against like the, the black background, and I would say like Michael Keaton's Batman, the Tim Burton one from like '89, I think when it came yep. out. It's just the Batman logo for sure. Uh, Jurassic Park, of course, is just the Jurassic Park logo. Okay, great call. That's definitely one think, that you could be. You know, if you recreated that one, you would boom Jurassic Park. You know. Yeah, I think Weird Al recreated that, recreated that one too. <laughs> you know, you're right. <laughs> what uh, song from uh, Jurassic Park did he do? Fucking... Uh, Jurassic Park is frightening in the dark. <laughs> All the dinosaurs are running wild. Nice. All right, I'm still like taking it. those episode 10 emails, y'all, but Barnes is really sewing this one. <laughs> Swag points but then through I guess the, the roof. The ultimate one, just logo wise, is you got to think Ghostbusters. Oh, wow. Yes. Great call. I know well, that was the logo. That was the movie poster, though. I guess for all those. Okay, that, that's what you're saying. Those were the movie posters for all those. Mm -hmm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great call. Just no, the, the Ghostbusters is the just an poster. iconic logo for sure. I guess a, a couple, a, another big logo kind of thing in the music world. I guess, but like the uh, all very similar to like the Rolling Stones mouth with a tongue coming out. You know. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Of course. Which I don't know, like like uh, Let It Bleed and Sticky Fingers both have pretty iconic albums. Like I don't think that that mouth, I, you know, I'm not sure if the uh, what album the mouth was actually, but that's pretty much like the Stones logo. Same thing with the Grateful Dead have like you know the Steal Your Face logo and uh, a lot of other just iconic you know turtles and bears and like logos and things that are identified with the band that aren't necessarily directly from an album cover you know for sure i would say one that is like kind of like a logo but it is only from one album cover will it be uh the dark side of the moon pink floyd with just a triangle in the yeah, middle for and, sure. like, the rainbow coming out the right side yep that one as well always reminded me, actually, of a movie iconic poster uh, uh, from, from from the same era, but uh, Clockwork Orange with the triangle uh, uh, guy shooting pool in the middle always kind of you yeah. know, reminded me of the same thing as like the dark side triangle rainbow coming out of it thing. Well, I was going to say that too. Is he shooting pool? I was thinking about that today, and I was like looking it up. I think he's like holding out like a knife or a stick, but it always looks like he's shooting pool. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it would make because more sense that he's going to, like, shoot a pool cue pool. into somebody's face or whatever, but, like... Yeah, no, it never happens. Like, I was thinking about that today, because I was thinking about that movie poster, and I was like, oh, yeah, he's out there, like, shooting pool, and I was like, wait a second, I don't think he is shooting pool. <laughs> I think he's just holding, his, like, his beating stick in, like, that kind of, like, direction. 
And then I've got another actual kind of logo kind of thing from a movie. But the Fight Club bar of soap, you know, him oh, holding the sure. soap up. That would be like if you saw, you know, if you see a T-shirt with the soap, uh, uh, something carved in a soap thing, you would know that it's a, a play on the Fight Club movie poster. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, even um, I think uh, Full Metal Jacket is just has the helmet. In okay, the yeah, great call. With like the Born to Kill uh, yeah, yeah. Army helmet in the middle, which I think has been spoofed here and there. But it's another one. Like if you just showed me that, I would know exactly what movie it is without like the title on the poster. Yeah, another one like that, I guess. And from a movie that, like, I don't think I've I've seen. And if I saw it, it was like way in the '90s when I was younger. But Silence of the Lambs. Like the black and white poster with the colorful butterfly sure. over the uh, over the mouth, you know. One hundred percent. Just like uh, uh, and again, just growing up in the nineties, there was that. I'm I'm, so, I'm, sure, I'm sure Weird Al had that one stuck somewhere because that was very. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's one that's another that's been spoofed a lot, and I'm not sure. I might be wrong on this one, so it might this might be uh, some Neil W. Wax shit here. It might just be a poster of an artist, but I think it is the album cover. But what about the one with the topless uh, Janet Jackson with the hands holding her boobs? Oh, great call. Yeah, I think that was actually a Rolling Stone magazine cover, if I'm not mistaken. Right, okay. But it could have been a, it could have been a, it might have been a, a might, Janet Jackson I, yeah. album. But yeah, that's a great call. Album cover or not, but it's definitely one of those iconic pictures where like you would see it everywhere. Definitely one of those back posters in the back of Spencer's. Or, <laughs> yes, uh, yes. But you've seen it spoof like a million times, too. I'm sure maybe even Weird Al. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess a couple like that that I'll get to that I did have on the list, but not actually the movie poster, but iconic posters from a movie, <laughs> right? See what I did there? Okay. But uh, uh, very iconic, like, college dorm posters. Uh, you definitely on sale at the back of Spencer's, like you said. But uh, and, and I make fun of this first one a lot, but Belushi crushing the bottle of Jack in the college sweater. Oh, All right. for sure. Okay. <laughs> and, and I guess the Animal House, even, uh, 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 movie poster is kind of epic itself, you know. The uh, cartoon mm -hmm. National Lampoon -y thing there, and then uh, as well, lots of like Travis. Uh, I actually have a poster of Travis Bickle holding the guns out from Taxi Driver, and like a lot of you know uh, De Niro with the gun out, looking all crazy posters. However, yeah, not the movie poster itself. He's kind of just standing there looking stupid, you know. Well, for sure. Like you, uh, you said it before too, but also like Scarface. There's like a hundred different, not uh, maybe just a okay, poster from yeah, the movie, yes. but like a hundred different posters of him in some different, for hilarious, sure. either holding the machine gun or sitting in front of the mountain of cocaine. Definitely. And, uh, Great call. Laying in the bathtub, watching the pelican. <laughs> Fly pelicans. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I... Yes, for me, I was going to say, just go back to movie posters, too, the actual poster, and, you know, I don't know if you have another one, but for me, I would say the most epic, and I think it's pretty, like, thought about, too, like, the most maybe epic movie poster of all time, but it would have to be uh, the Jaws movie poster of yep. the, the lady swimming on top of the water and, like, the giant shark coming up, like, about to eat her. Yep, I had it on the list, for sure. Like yeah, like you said, just the uh, a huge shark compared to the small lady floating above, you know, and uh, definitely, definitely nailed the the fear of a great white shark in that picture, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, for sure, and I think that movie that was just like such a change, like people were afraid of the water after it. it really, just sums up what this movie's gonna be about. <laughs> <laughs> just one quick clip. Um, I mean, maybe you'll end it that, there with your iconic uh, movie poster. Maybe I'll, on the other hand, end it with uh, uh, the iconic album cover. But I guess, uh, uh, and again, talking about recreation, uh, even in uh, one of the more recent Netflix and chats, where uh, one of the many Halloween costumes that got recreated was the Sgt. Pepper album cover from uh, no, the Beatles, yeah, of be course. Same thing with Abbey Road. It's, you know, you could kind of go either way, them crossing the street. or uh, But the whole Sgt. Pepper uh, album cover is definitely, like, you know, just beyond synonymous with the band and something that you could recreate a thousand times or put in a thousand different 
you know, interpretations, and it would immediately come back to Sergeant Pepper. Just really. Uh, That's funny too, man. Because you say Sergeant Pepper, and you said Abbey Road, but I would think Abbey Road would be the more iconic Beatles like poster before them just walking the street. You've seen that a million times. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, for sure. I mean, either or, I suppose. The uh, you're right. That probably the them crossing the street. But the Sergeant Pepper, just you know, costumes and, and all that, uh, portrait whole thing. Yeah, no, that comes wild, man. Whole yeah, thing. you're right. There is a lot going on in that uh, in that album. It almost looks like a like the Muppet Show poster. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's just so much going on. Big house. W e f u n k. We funk. <laughs> <laughs>